inspirational music and a message of encouragement. That's what you'll hear on today's Back to the Bible. Pastor Warren Wiersbe, the associate Bible teacher, will bring a message, and we've chosen some beautiful songs which tell about the promises of God. song emphasizes the fact that no matter what it may happen to buildings, God's true church stands. Thank you so much, choir, for sharing that message with us. This is Warren Wiersbe welcoming you to Back to the Bible broadcast and reminding you that school has started again and your teenagers are busy with homework and athletics and one thing or another and they may be tempted to uh, neglect the spiritual. And this is why we publish a magazine called Young Ambassador. Here's a letter from a listener and a reader in, uh, let's see, British Columbia. I have been receiving the Young Ambassador for the past six years. It is difficult to express how much this has meant to me. It has greatly contributed to growth in my spiritual life and always met my need for good reading material. That's why we publish it. I'd like to send you a free copy of the Young Ambassador magazine. It emphasizes the Christian life practically, the Word of God applied in an exciting, practical way to young teenagers. Write to me at Back to the Bible Broadcast, Box 10, Winnipeg, Manitoba. Ask for Young Ambassador Magazine and we'll send it out to you.
darkness you see, there is light for a look at the Savior, and life more abundant and free. and Tom Schindler. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face. That's the emphasis in Hebrews 12, verses 1 through 3. And these three verses are really the climax to Hebrews 11. The writer has been giving to us examples from the great people of faith, and he says, now the greatest example of all is our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience, endurance, the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God." For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. I must confess to you that I am not much of an athlete, although now that we live in Lincoln, Nebraska, I find myself for some reason getting interested in football. They didn't have football in New Testament times, but they did have the great Olympic Games, and the Greek and the Roman world enjoyed sports, athletics. That is the, the setting of Hebrews chapter 12. We move into the arena, and we're running a race, and the writer is now applying to our lives what he's been emphasizing in chapter 11. Let us, like these Old Testament heroes, Run with endurance the race that is set before us. There's the danger of getting weary and quitting. Verse 3, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. That word wearied means you get dull, you start drifting, you sort of give up, you faint in your minds. And uh, there are many saints today who are fainting and faltering. Now he says, you're facing opposition of sinners, and you have a race to run. Now, what are you going to do about it? What is going to encourage us to endure? Well, if we're going to be faithful and win the race, if we're going to endure in spite of problems and oppositions on the outside and fears and fainting on the inside, there are certain considerations that must be important to us. First of all, we must consider the witnesses around us. We are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Now, don't make that word witnesses spectators. The picture here is not that uh, Noah and Abraham and Sarah and Moses and uh, Rahab are watching us. No, no. The word witness is our word martyr. This is someone who tells what he knows, what he's experienced. The people in Hebrews 11 ha are bearing witness to us. That's one of the key words in Hebrews 11. God bore witness to them. Now, they are bearing witness to us. What are they saying? Faith works. I don't know what problems you may be facing, what opposition you may be enduring, but every one of these persons says faith works. You say, I've got a brother or a sister who makes life miserable for me, then talk to Abel and talk to uh, Joseph. They knew something about that. You say, well, where I am on the job, I'm getting persecuted. Talk to David. He knew something about that. You say, well, God's calling me into Christian service, but I've got a good job and a great future ahead of me, and, and I'm just wondering what I should do. Talk to Moses. He went through that. You say, well, I'm having to move. Uh, we've reached... Uh, that stage in life where it's just too much to take care of the house and all this property, we're going to have to move, and it's tough, it's hard. Well, talk to Abraham. He had to move. You say, we've had some disappointments. We've prayed about some things, and nothing's happened yet. Well, talk to Abraham about that. He waited for 25 years for God to keep one promise. 
I had a, a rather critical letter from a radio listener some time ago uh, criticizing both me and Mr. Epp for preaching from the Old Testament. As you know, Mr. Epp enjoys preaching from Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and the great characters in the Old Testament. No one does it any better than he does. And at that time, I was doing a series in the Old Testament, I believe, on the Feast of Jehovah. And this, uh, this brother wrote and said, don't be teaching the Old Testament. Jesus has come, and the Old Testament's been fulfilled, and now it's obsolete. I don't believe that for one minute. The Old Testament is not obsolete. What he's saying to me is, read your Old Testament and find out what God did to people who dared to believe him. Every New Testament doctrine has an Old Testament illustration. And every Old Testament event of any significance is interpreted by New Testament doctrine. Romans chapter 15, verse 4 settles that right now. I wrote to the brother and said, My brother, you better start reading your Old Testament. We need both the Old and the New. Romans 15, 4, For whatever things were written in earlier times were written for our learning that we, through patience and comfort or encouragement of the Scriptures, might have hope. The early church didn't have the complete New Testament. They were writing it. They had the Old Testament. The only Bible Jesus had was the Old Testament. Now, don't tell me you can't minister out of the Old Testament. Hebrews 11 says in the Old Testament you have examples of people who faced impossible situations, and yet they accomplished great things for God. They can encourage you. Oh, there have been times when I have been a little bit discouraged, and I've read about what God did for Abraham or what he did for Joshua. I remember one particular time when a word that God spoke to Solomon just came through with great power to my life and saved me from making a big blunder. You need your Old Testament. I meet people all over who say, well, I don't read the Old Testament. Shame on you. Jesus read the Old Testament. He quoted from it. Paul used the Old Testament as he was writing New Testament letters. I want you to know that you need the Old Testament scriptures. We must consider the witnesses around us. They are saying to us, you can make it. We made it. Now, these people weren't perfect. Jacob wasn't perfect. Uh, Moses wasn't perfect. Hebrews 11 doesn't list any of their sins. This is a chapter on faith, not on belief. This is a chapter on success, not failure. They were ordinary garden variety people who dared to believe God and God answered their prayer and God kept his promises. If you are going to endure and keep going and not faint and not falter and quit, you'd better consider the witnesses around you because they are saying to you, you can make it. We made it. We trusted God. He saw us through. He opened the Red Sea. He knocked down the walls of Jericho. He did it for us and he will do it for you if you'll trust him. But there's a second consideration, and that's the weights that are upon us. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. Weights are those um, encumbrances and hindrances that get in the way. They may not be bad things. You know, as we grow in our Christian life, we don't just get rid of bad things. We also have to get rid of good things that are keeping us from better things and better things that keep us from best things. I cannot go to every meeting. I cannot read every book. I cannot preach at every invitation that people give to me. It's impossible to do all that is available. I've got to make a choice. And sometimes some of these things we hold on to are weights. Can you imagine a, a runner getting on the racetrack at the Olympic Games and, and carrying with him a 50-pound uh, sack of flour? Nothing wrong with flour. It's great stuff. If you're hungry, make bread out of it. But it's no good at a race. And there may be something in my life or your life right now that hinders us because it's a weight. We can't find a chapter and verse that says this is evil, but it's a weight. And... Um, Athletes always trained, you know, to get rid of excess baggage. Some of us need to work on getting rid of excess baggage in our lives. The Greek athletes used to train carrying weights. Then when they left these weights behind, they could just run like the wind because of the lightness of the feeling that they had. The word sin, of course, is not specified. It just says the sin which so easily besets us, which is around us, which stands around us, a prevalent sin. I wonder what that sin is. I wonder if he's not talking about unbelief. That's, that is such a prevalent sin, unbelief. The whole theme of Hebrews is the just shall live by faith. He used uh, Israel as the example of unbelief. And that's such a prevalent sin, the sin of unbelief. 
So if you're going to win the race and if you're going to endure and keep going in spite of all the problems, you're going to have to consider the witnesses around you. They're all saying, we made it. We're bearing witness that we made it. The Lord saw us through. And you better consider the weights that are upon you. There may be some sin in your life that's keeping you from running with endurance. You don't need excess baggage. You don't need extra luggage. Get rid of it. Uh, travel simply. Travel lightly. Because God will honor you if you will. Then there's a third consideration. He says, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. We must consider not only the witnesses around us and the weights upon us, but the race that is before us. In the Olympic Games, they assigned a lane to each runner, and you stayed in that lane. And the runners tried to get you off into another lane. They tried to bump you into the other lane, move you out. But you were to stay in that lane. Paul talks about this uh, over in Philippians chapter 3. He says this, uh, verse 12, Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend, get my hands on, that for which also I am apprehended of Christ. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. I haven't arrived yet. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Notice now, there's concentration here. I'm pressing all of his energy, all of his attention. A, a runner would be a fool while he's running down that race course to look around and wave at his friends, to look back and see what the others are doing, to look down. He looks ahead and he keeps going. He concentrates and he stays in his own lane. It's been a great encouragement to me to know that God has a lane assigned for me. He's got one assigned for you. Let's not criticize each other. God has a race for me to run. God has gifts he's given to me, and he has a calling he's given to me, and purposes he's given to me, and I have to fulfill that. And before my own master, I'm going to stand or fall. Now, you may not agree with everything I do. You may not agree with my ministry, but I have to do what God's called me to do according to the Word of God, and so must you. Occasionally, people write to us at Back to the Bible and suggest that we get involved in this movement or that crusade or something else, and the answer is simply, this is not what God's called us to do. We cannot do everything. We cannot go everywhere. We cannot be all things to all people. We have to run the race the way God has called us to run the race. And we have to give the same freedom to others, which we do. Now, if you're going to endure, don't get in the wrong lane. If you're running in the wrong direction, if you're running in the wrong lane, or if you're more worried about the other runners, watch out. And finally, we must consider the Savior above us, looking unto Jesus. Now, Jesus is the author and the finisher, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. When he starts, he finishes. You put your eyes on yourself, you're going to falter and fail. You'll get discouraged. You put your eyes on other uh, believers, you're going to get in trouble. You'll falter and fail. Keep your eyes on the Lord. How do you do that? Through the Word. He who has begun the good work in you will perfect it, perform it until the day of Jesus Christ, Philippians 1, 6. Now, the Lord Jesus didn't have an easy time of it. He had to endure the cross. He endured the contradiction of sinners. They called him a drunkard, a glutton. They said he was demon-possessed. You don't like it because people criticize you and say things about you that aren't true. They did that to Jesus. Are you any better than he is? I don't think so. He said if they've called the master of the house, Beelzebub, what are they going to call the children? The Lord Jesus Christ endured because of what he did, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. He looked beyond the cross to the crown. He looked beyond the tree to the throne. He looked beyond the suffering to the glory. In other words, our Lord Jesus was living by faith. And when he went to the cross, he knew that he was obeying the will of God, despising the shame, because one day he, would, he knew he would be seated with his Father at the right hand of the throne of God. Now fix your eyes of faith on the Lord Jesus. The, the Greek verb is looking off and away to Jesus. Watch out for distractions. Watch out for detours. Right now you're worried about somebody else in the church, somebody who's doing something you don't like and it bothers you. Get your eyes off of that person. Get your eyes off, the, off of the things of this world and off of yourself. 
and fix your eyes of faith on the Lord Jesus. I often think about that experience that uh, Peter and John had in John chapter 21. When Peter began to follow the Lord again, he heard footsteps behind him, and he turned around. There was John. John was following. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, what's this man going to do? And Jesus said, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. I'll tell you, I have so much uh, trouble just keeping my eyes on the Lord Jesus, staying in my right lane. I don't have much time to go around telling other people what they ought to be doing. Consider him. That word consider in verse 3 means uh, seriously study him. Uh, don't just look at him, but really seriously uh, examine him. Consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. Uh, compare your situation to his. That's what he's saying. You think you're having a rough time? Well, he had a rough time. You hurt because people have abused you? Well, they abused him, and he was perfect. We deserve it, <laughs> but he didn't deserve it. What he's saying is this. If we're going to win the race, if we're going to keep on going and not quit, not sit around whimpering and lick, licking our wounds and saying that people don't understand us, if we're going to endure and just keep on going and win the race, we're going to have to uh, consider the witnesses around us. Every one of the Old Testament men and women of faith says... You can make it if you'll just live by faith. Consider the weights upon us. Get rid of the weights and the sin that trips us up. Get rid of those things that are hindering us. We must consider the race that is before us. Get in your lane and stay there. This one thing I do, said the Apostle Paul. The average Christian says, these 50 things I do. And he wonders why he's worn out and never really accomplishes anything. He tears down more than he builds up. Consider the race before you, the job God wants you to do, and most of all, consider the Savior above you. He has already won the race, and he is the author, the pioneer, and the perfecter of your faith, your faith. And when you grow in faith through the Word of God, when you see Jesus by faith in the Word of God, then you can win the race. The race is not easy, and it's going to get harder. Others have won the race. Get rid of the hindrances. Focus on the goal. Look by faith to Jesus Christ, and you will endure to the end.
certainly is a fitting way to end a series on Hebrews 11. Hallelujah. How wonderful it is that our Savior, the King of kings and Lord of lords, enables us to live by faith and to overcome and to glorify his name. Well, be sure you're in church on the Lord's Day and go up to your pastor and tell him that you love him. Pray for him. And just have a good time with the people of God in church on the Lord's Day. Here's a note from Pennsylvania. We enjoy the program so much. The music, the missionary, the teaching, the evangelism, plus the good printed material surely helps me to grow and teach in my Sunday school. I recently used your study book on James. It blessed me and the class. Well, that's what Back to the Bible is all about, just being a blessing to people. We'd like to hear from you. Please write to us at Back to the Bible Broadcast, Box 10, Winnipeg, Manitoba. This is Warren Wearsby thanking you for being a part of our broadcast family. Remember now, the just shall live by faith. Thank mm -hmm. you.